What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 71 of the Charge to the Top here at Hereford FC and today we are playing it back in the Championship of course after a brief distraction, a brief hiatus from covering league games due to the EFL Cup run we are back. If you missed last episode it was against Tottenham in the semi-final um, obviously kind of sport it a little bit we didn't quite make the final which was really unfortunate but the performances itself were really really impressive you know we played really well I was super happy with how the team performed as a whole, but of course, with that cup run coming to an end, our attention shifts back to the league, and well, we've not played too many games since that last episode. You can see here in the last kind of 20 or so days, we've played five games, and uh, well, we're doing fairly well. You can see in the last four games, all played at home, we've gone unbeaten, which is great. Our home form really has been um, great this year. You kind of look at it, the last time we lost at home was to Sunderland in October, and, uh, well, today we are taking on Sunderland away from home, so we're going to be looking to get a little bit of revenge on them. But first and foremost, just to look through these results. Following on from the Tottenham defeat, a bit of a disappointing start, I guess, to this run of fixtures. We lost 4-1 against Birmingham. It was one of those games where it kind of just felt like every shot they had went in. I feel like you always have one or two of these in Football Manager each season, and this was just our time, I guess. It finished 4-1. Jay Beckford got a goal. It was merely a consolation, however... Um, and yeah, not not the ideal start, you know, two defeats in a row, we haven't done that, I don't think, since, well, you can see here, MK Dons and Sunderland uh, going back some months, so I was quite eager to set the record straight, and well, we took on Wolverhampton Wanderers, a team who were relegated just last year, but have really struggled to adapt to the championship, and we beat them 2-1, a good performance, relatively comfortable, Ben Marshall and Kevin Kelly getting the goals, I feel like Ben Marshall's a player who's gone a little bit under the radar, he's played fairly well, you know, he doesn't bang in the goals for fun, but he's chipped in with a decent contribution to the team, a 7.02 rating for him in the league. And of course, playing kind of centre mid, uh, or sorry, centre attacking mid, right wing striker, he's kind of just filled in various positions. So it was good to see him get on the score sheet. Kevin Kelly getting another goal. He is now up to 68 goals uh, in the league here at Hereford. That is tying the record. So he is going to be looking to score today to become outright, uh, I guess, Hereford FC's all time goal scorer. Anyway, the next game we had a 0-0 draw against MK Dons. MK Dons, a team quite close to us in the league, actually. So a little bit disappointing that we couldn't pull away from them, but to avoid defeat was important. And then, and then in our two most recent games, we beat Fulham, a side who were relegated last year and actually languished down in the relegation zone in the championship. You can see there, 2-1, perhaps not the most convincing of results, but we got the three points. And while against Brentford, we won 2-0. James Moore, the left winger on loan from Swansea with two goals coming on off the bench. A great impact sub by him out on the left wing ensured the victory again in a game that we probably deserve to lead. So we have played only five games since the last episode. You can see we currently sit in fourth place on 58 points. We're doing really, really well. Um, unfortunately, Burnley, you know, 11 points ahead of us with 13 games left. That's going to be tough to try and close that deficit. Of course, we're going to try and do that, um, but it's not going to be easy. And today, well, we take on Sunderland, who are down in sixth. A win here against them could see us pull as far as uh, nine points clear of the teams outside of the playoff spots, which I feel like would be a really good situation to be in. I kind of set up this season by saying I wanted to get in the playoffs and well after a bit of a slow start to the season you know a lot of draws in here which kind of held us back you know slipping up quite a lot we've started to get wins on the board and kind of avoid those draws and well we're doing pretty well you can see we've had two defeats really since the start of December which is nothing to be kind of ashamed of really and our form has been great you know sellout crowds has been good to see as well you know we're maxing out our stadium um, as you guys will know We've been working on getting a stadium done. It's still in the planning stages. I thought that the planning was only going to last a few years, but it's still going now. I don't know if that's just a case of the planning's taking longer than anticipated. I'm not sure if that completion date of January next year, so in 11 months' time, is the completion date for the new stadium. I guess we'll find out on that kind of front uh, exactly what's going on, but it's still kind of planned, I guess, the, the stadium expansion at this point, although you can see here financially... We're not in the greatest spot right now. Of course, last year, as we experienced, um, we received £5 million in kind of uh, prize money for the championship as well as TV money. Once that money comes in, the financial kind of burden on us doesn't really concern me too much. We're in a, a good spot, really, financially. Obviously, last season we made a profit. This year, a bit more of a loss, but then when you consider some of the transfers we've made this year, you know, spent £5 million on players, that's kind of to be expected. 
But all in all, really happy with how we're getting on. Chris Smalling's had an immediate impact, of course, a player we signed in on a free uh, to play centre-back and also to be our under-23s manager. You can see a 7.18 average rating for him in the Championship, really showing his worth as a player for us. And despite his uh, kind of deteriorating physicals, still just an exceptional defender at this level. He really has done well for us. It says he's only a decent League One player. Don't listen to that at all. Really don't rate the opinions of my staff members all that highly. But anyway, should we get into today's game? It's a big match against Sunderland. I believe it's an earlier kickoff today. Um, so I'm not sure if the game's on TV. It may well be. In terms of our team, we go with Chucky in goal across the back four. We've got Gums playing left back, Rumsby at left centre back, Smalling, and then Rojas at right back. I didn't realise this, but when Rojas scored against Spurs, that was actually his first ever goal for the club, which for a player who's been at the side since, uh, well, we were in League One, is um, I don't know if that's surprising or not. I guess he's a right back, so you don't expect him to get a load. But uh, I found it quite funny that it's just taken him that long to get his first goal. And well, it was a pretty good moment for him to get it as well. Anyway, in the centre of midfield, we're going to go with Sean Mulhall, uh, the Irish player who, of course, joined from Nottingham Forest at the start of the year. Despite his poor discipline, he's played pretty well for us there. Alongside him, we go in Needham, of course, a player who, at one point, there were grumblings of discontent coming from his kind of agent and himself. You know, uh, a bit of a worry, perhaps, that he might want to move on. But... He's been very good for us. We've kept hold of him, and uh, so far this year, he's been putting in some top, top performances uh, in our championship season. Anyway, moving to our attacking midfielders. On the left, we go with Jay Beckford. Started off the season really, really well, this guy. Got loads of goals and assists. Really has slowed down, though, really, since the last kind of few months. Going back three or four months, he's not been great for us out on the left. I might actually give James more than nod. I mentioned the fact he grabbed... Uh, two goals in our most recent game. I think we'll give him a chance, actually, to see what he can do. At centre attack in mid, we go with Brad Lynch, a player who has been great for us on off the bench. He started to get a bit more of a run in the first team, and he's continued to show some good goal scoring and creative form. So he holds down a position there. Out on the right wing, we go with Jamie Price, definitely our key player, our big player in the squad. Really like this guy. 11 goals, 9 assists in 22 games. Definitely nothing to be scoffed at. Has had his kind of fair share of injury problems, it'd be fair to say. Of course, joined us in the summer. He bruised his head twice. He's damaged his foot twice, but he's fit and raring to go today. Hopefully, obviously, he won't get injured. I've probably jinxed that now and he will get injured, but well, we'll have to deal with that if it happens. And, uh, of course, leading the line, Kevin Kelly. Big game for him today. He's been kind of stuck on 68 goals for a little while now. You can see he's not scored in the last three games for us. He is going to want to get that one goal that would see him become the, the top goal scorer in the history of Hereford FC, of course, following Hereford United's reform. And that's really what we've got to aim for here. So anyway, I'm going to tell the players just a kind of, oh, Sunderland one, of course. As I mentioned, Sunderland, they beat us back in November in the home game, which was the last home game we won. They've gone pretty strong, of course. We found some great form as of late. And, uh, well, with a playoff spot really firmly in our eyes, this is the kind of game that we really want to win to put ourselves in a comfortable position whereby we might be avoiding kind of going into the last few games of the season knowing desperately, you know, we absolutely have to win if we want to get uh, like the spot in the playoffs, which, you know, after the last few years of kind of last day of the season drama and having it all to play for, it'd be nice to kind of get the playoff spot wrapped up early if we could. And, well, this kind of game probably going to be crucial if we want to do that. Anyway, five minutes gone here. We give away the ball really poorly. It's a really great opportunity here for Sunderland and Chucky gets a hand to it. It's not enough, and while not the start we wanted, we gave the ball away in a really um, kind of poor position, and then Monchini, uh, or Monchini, I'm not sure, Anton the postcard had to say that guy's name. He found himself in a really good position, you know, we'd all pushed up, I'm not sure who it was, it kind of left centre-back or left-back who played him on side, but ultimately it left him clean through on goal and well with a relatively easy finish. You can see here Turnbull, big ball forward, who is that? Uh, it was Rumsby actually just caught out of position, deflected, I think off the defender, Chucky kind of got a half a hand to it, but unfortunately did find its way into the back of the net. And uh, yeah, not the start we wanted. We're going to have to bounce back and away from home. It's not going to be easy. We've been on a good little run of home kind of games and playing well at home in the league. But our last away game, we did lose. And well, it would be not great, I guess, to lose again. Looking at the stats, 50-50 possession, really so far in this game. We've had a few more shots, but of course Sunderland with that one clear-cut chance, which they, they took well, and while we're lacking a little bit of a cutting edge at the moment, and well, we've got a set piece to deal with here. Calavolaro at the edge of the box lays it to Carl Jenkinson, who slots it home, and it's just so easy for Sunderland. Two shots, two goals. It wasn't actually Jenkinson who scored, it was Mancini. I mean, I don't think it was offside again. I feel like we've tried to pull this offside trap, and I don't know. I mean, Jenkinson... 
he's got the shot stolen off him there by the striker. Not 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 particularly fair play. I kind of want to. I, I want to see what was it offside. That's what I'm curious about. Was it offside? Let's find out. So the ball gets played forward here. Oh, uh, I mean, maybe in line. It's tight, isn't it? And then I don't know what happens there. They they kind of just steal the ball off each other. Right, not ideal. Two goals down. I mean, we've got to fight back here. We've had some really good results kind of in not-so-distant live comms in the league, but, well, we're struggling here today against Sunderland, a team who maybe they're our crypt tonight. Maybe Sunderland are our Achilles heel because, well, as I mentioned, we've lost to them before. I was hoping we could bounce back against them today, but that first-half performance, not good enough, boys. We owe Sunderland after what happened last time out. Just trying to encourage the players. Kevin Kelly, I need you to start finding the back of the net. I'm actually going to take off Brad Lynch and I'm going to bring in Sam Booty, a player who he's been out for a little while with an injured, got injured in that first leg against Tottenham, some of you guys may remember, um, just last episode. Unfortunately, you know, not had, um, you know, a bit of time to build up some match fitness. So we're going to kind of throw him in a little bit at the deep end here and see if he sinks or swims. But we need him at centre attack in mid to start pulling the strings to be the creative force that we're, well, somewhat lacking, it'd be fair to say, um, in the opening hour of this game but while well, we're time ticking away our fortunes really haven't changed and it's still Sunderland with just those two um, kind of clear cut chances that they took which uh, kind of leaves them sitting comfortable at the moment let's go more on the attack I'm going to switch our wingers to attack and change Mulhall to be on support uh, Jamie Price has not had the best of games which is not ideal Part of me wants to switch to a narrower system, actually, for the rest of this game. Give it a bit of a roll of the dice. Go with something like this. Um, and then maybe we bring on uh, Stain, or Strain, rather, to play advanced playmaker for us. Of course, Strain, the Australian who joined us in January. Not had a, a kind of solid run in the first team, but a very, very good advanced playmaker. So I feel like if we bring him in, he's going to be able to do a job for us, the Australian. So I think we're going to go with this. We're going to have a bit of a roll of the dice. You know, a system that I've had up my sleeve for a little while it's not been a great game as far as we're concerned and i want to try just mixing up the system a little bit i want to get price and kelly alongside each other up top and see if they can make something happen for us and while we're on the attack here need him edge of the box can pull a shot from range lays it to strain the australian effort kelly probably should do better than that puts it wide he's still looking for that last goal that would see him take the record goal scorer marker and well He's not had a great day at the office today, and he has been slowing down a little bit of late, which is perhaps a little bit of cause for concern as well. This is cause for concern. We have to deal with it there, and we do. Can Kevin Kelly close down Turnbull here and put him under some pressure? Ball cleared straight to our man, Strain. Now with Booty. Now can we build something? Kevin Kelly. Price is in the centre. It's going to take a great cross in to find him. It's a great cross. It deflects onto the woodwork. And while you'd have to say, the tactical change seems to be working in terms of we're creating more opportunities, but unfortunately... We've not scored yet, and I've got to make a change here. I'm going to bring in Ben Marshall, I think. I'm probably going to take off Price, I think. When we've Kevin Kelly to advance playmaker, I'm bring on Ben Marshall for Jamie Price. Bit of a bad day at the office for our strikers, I think it would be fair to say. We've not had a, a whole host of great chances, but the few that have come our way, we've failed to take. And, well, we've got a set piece here. Booty whips it in near post. It's headed away as far as strain. Can it go back out wide, perhaps? Rojas cross from deep, maybe? Bringing the ball forward the right back. Lays it to Gums, the, the kind of left centre back. Through to Marshall. And while Marshall, the sub, he scores immediately. It's what we wanted from him. I'm going to do a quick kind of touchline team talk to encourage the players. We have 10 minutes left to get back in this game and get another goal that would see us share the spoils. Nice little ball through by Gums, to be fair, the centre back. Good vision there. And uh, well, Marshall on off the bench. A big kind of perhaps bold move, I guess, to take off Jamie Price for him. But it's at least paid off immediately. Um, but, well, there's not long left in this game, and we need to stay on the front foot here. Five minutes remaining. Time just ticking away. Unfortunately, I've not got a whole lot more I can do in terms of to go more attacking. We're already playing a very attacking system, and unfortunately, Sunderland are going to kind of take all three points today. A game that you looked at the stats, you'd say that we were probably the team who deserved to win, but ultimately, uh, a lack of clinicalness, I guess, in front of goal has cost us. And Sunderland, you know, they took opportunities that came their way. Um, unfortunately that was the earlier game in the day so we won't exactly know what that means in terms of our league position for a little while but um, yeah not not exactly the result we were looking for if we're being completely honest there and it does mean going into our next little run of games there's a little bit of added pressure perhaps to kind of step up our performances a little bit 
and um, kind of get back on the straight and narrow. Looking at it, you know, Burnley 11 points ahead of us, potentially 14 points ahead of us. Um, that automatic promotion spot seems a long, long way away now. In terms of when we'll be back, I think it's going to be for the Brighton game. It's not that far away, just over a month. Um, but they are currently in third. They're one of our big playoff rivals, so that'll be a big game for us. We have also got the Aston Villa game coming up. I may do that one as well, depending on how things pan out. Um, as I said earlier in this commentary, I'm hoping it doesn't go down to the wire this year. I'm hoping it's a nice, kind of relaxing end of season, but... Um, I don't know. The playoffs, you know, still very much the, the goal, I think, for this year. And I feel like one result like this one against Sunderland isn't going to deter me too much from that because I think it'd be fair to say we were rather unlucky. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's episode from me. Hopefully you have enjoyed as always. If you have, please do leave a like. I do greatly appreciate it. Of course, if you've got any comments, leave them down below. Uh, and other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. And you jerk it out.